Do not accept trinkets from space, for you will undermine your freedom in the process. Nothing really important will be given to humanity in this regard by those who are intervening in your world. They are seeking to create dependency and addiction. This gives them power and leverage even in their small numbers over a much larger human family that is unsuspecting and that can be easily persuaded to introduce new sources of power into your world would make you dependent upon those who are here to take advantage of the world for their own purposes. Humanity has not gained the unity yet to use its technology for entirely beneficial purposes. You do not need more powerful weapons now. You do not need more destructive weapons. The use of weapons in space is so very limited. That is not how you will gain advantage or protection in the greater community. Learning this represents a more mature phase of humanity's evolution. Here it will be persuasion and perception, freedom and a deeper knowledge that will assure your well-being not the use of force. Nations in your region of space have security forces and can amass together a great military power. But this is only for the mutual defense of their trading networks. They have realized that they cannot overwhelm each other by force. And so they seek to influence each other through persuasion and thought. This represents a more mature use of power in the universe and a new threshold of learning for humanity. Your reckless use of your world's resources and your reliance upon technology to save you from its consequences represent two very foolish and damaging pursuits. You will have to sustain yourselves with what you have within this world if you are to remain free. Even your allies in the universe will not be able to sustain you from afar because they do not have these capabilities. They will not seduce you to become dependent upon their technology or their foreign governance. Because they represent free nations and not those who seek to take advantage and to exploit weaker nations such as yours. You must look at your world as your storehouse for food, water and energy and for all the things that you will need both now and in the future. If you exhaust these, you will decline, undoing all of the progress that you have made. Even your technological potential will not be able to be realized in the face of such great social disintegration. This would make you vulnerable to one of the great opportunities that others have over a weak and failed race. An opportunity that is permitted in the greater community. That opportunity is seen as rescuing a planet's resources from the over-exploitation of its native race. Which is allowable given the ethics and the rules of engagement that exist in this part of the galaxy. It is not humanity's subjugation or ruin that we want to promote, but instead its strength, its unity and the fulfillment of its great potential in the universe. Yet certain things must be understood. Technology alone will not save you from resource depletion. And resource depletion will undo your technology. You must establish through time, consensus and cooperation a sustainable use of your world maintaining its biological diversity, the quality of its atmosphere, the quality of its waters and the quality of its soils and its lands. Adversity will help you to come to terms with this and to see its necessity, but adversity can also undo you, setting in motion forces of destruction that would be very difficult to stop. Your allies in the universe have great concern over this. Given your transmissions into space, they have seen the potential here. They know the path that most races follow in the depletion of the world's resources. The inevitable results of this depletion and the resulting loss of their sovereignty and control to other nations. This is the path that most nations have taken. The consequences are predictable and are largely the same. At this moment, larger powers in the universe who are aware of you, view you as reckless and destructive. Though they themselves are not intervening in your world. 
They will allow other independent commercial forces to attempt to gain access here. Should that access be accomplished and fulfilled and should the power of authority be shifted from the human family to others, then the larger powers will enter to take advantage of the situation. Much depends on your understanding and perception and upon the self-sufficiency that you can establish and sustain in your world. If your peoples agree to live simply to share resources and to limit your population through ethical means, then you will be able to establish a greater stability and self-sufficiency. Then the greater powers in your region will not look upon you with the same desire for intervention, but will have to respect you as a united people who cannot be conquered by the use of subtle forces. Unity gives you strength but also respect in the greater community. The attempts to bring you into the trade networks will be ongoing and persuasive. Intervention such as is occurring in the world today would not likely be attempted. Yet in your divided and conflicted state such intervention is occurring and is progressing. It will seek to shift the authority of the world to foreign powers with human participation and support. It will seek to use the human family. It will seek to gain the great advantages this world offers in its vast biological resources through the use of human labor and cooperation. It is known to us through your transmissions and through our own observation of your world that some people believe that other races could easily come and set up a colony in the world and establish themselves here using their advanced technology. But given the biological hazard that your world creates for those who are visiting, this is not easy to do and has never been successfully accomplished. In fact, your world has the power to infect and destroy entire races in your local universe. Given the presence and the diversity of its biological agents, other races have rendered the worlds barren and in many cases devoid of nearly all of the native life forms. They have little or no immunity from contamination. Earth then can be viewed as both a great asset and as an immense source of contamination. It is viewed in both these ways by all races who are aware of your presence and who recognize the importance of your world and the condition of humanity. The third requirement is the need for extreme discretion. To be a free race in a neighborhood of space filled with races that have no freedom and do not want to encourage freedom, you must become extremely discreet. You must establish yourself as a non-threatening presence to these worlds. You must not engage in trade with them to any significant degree. And you must not allow them to visit your world and to scrutinize your behavior. The rules of engagement in this region of space will give you these rights if you can demonstrate a united intent and purpose in establishing and maintaining your boundaries to space. Powerful nations recognize other powerful nations, they are not persuaded by other kinds of inducements. To them power is resources, and resources represent not only wealth, but survival, for their advanced technology has made their survival now more difficult to sustain and their resources more difficult to acquire. This is so very different from how the peoples of the world view such things. They think the world is there to be plundered, and once the world has been plundered, the universe is there to be plundered, and by that point they believe they will have the technology to plunder it. But you cannot plunder the universe. Many have tried, and all have failed. Your discretion then becomes critically important. You will have to learn how to communicate without broadcasting into space. Even the most secret involvements of your governments are broadcast into space in many situations, and can be easily discerned by those who have gained knowledge of your language and your tendencies. For the world has been observed for a long time by all the powers in your vicinity, those who seek to gain advantage here have waited until you built an infrastructure that they can use. 
and now they are attempting to persuade you to give them the reins of power and to make you dependent upon their technology and the sources of their technology.